Hey guys, you're welcome to another video and in this video we're going to be looking at the new for loop syntax in Zig. So in prior videos I explained that Zig has a typical for loop that allows you to iterate over a slice or an array. Uh, so for example if I have like my name as uh, say it's a debio. So what for loop allows me to do is to iterate over this name and get out each character and optional index. So uh, in this case, I'm going to print out each character. Just so, so this is just a recap of the for loop we talked about in the prior videos. And so what I can do is to do debug.print. And what this allows me to do is basically have a character that I want to print and then I'm going to have let's have the character here so this should basically print out everything to starts okay then I could have a comma here just to show you that I'm printing this you know in sequence and then debug the print a new line to make sure that the line is properly terminated I save that and I do say good run. And we get an error. This is okay. Sorry, that was a mistake. I need the empty initializer. And as you can see, this prints this prints out each character with a comma. Now, another thing you can do, if you remember, is you can also get, like, the index, and then you can print it alongside it. So, say, for example, we could do some polonic this, and then we have index, and index. Checking this out, we'll see that now we're going to print out each index before the character, just like that. And... So this is what for loops allow you to do in Zig, but now there is a new version, um, you know, for for loop that has been introduced. Now this is in a latest version of Zig, so you might not be able to um, use it if you're if you're using like an older version of Zig. You have to be using like the master branch, think like in Zig version. So this is the version of Zig that I'm using. This is uh, compiled from the source code, from the Zig source code. So I think if you go to zigland.org, you should be able to get like an updated version that supports the syntax. So what syntax are we talking about here? And this syntax allow you to basically loop over multiple arrays or slices at the same time. So how does this work exactly? Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a very simple example using a standard library construct called multi array list. And so I'm going to sticky dog very uh, So what multi array list lets you do is basically instead of storing your array, uh, your any item that you want to store in an array list into, you know, as just like a linear structure, it takes the structure uh, that you pass into it and it, it makes it an array of, basically creates an array for each element inside of that struct. Um, to explain, we're going to have something like a song. Um, so let's say that we're writing like a music application or something, now we have a song. Now we have Titan. So we could have a title for the song. Uh, yeah, title is fine. And this is going to be like a slice of a string. And then we could have like, I don't know, album. Well, let's just say exact number. And the date we see this is in 32. Now we have these two properties for a song. And what multi read this allows us to do is basically, it's going to store this um, title in its own array, and then the track number is an array instead of just storing this song structure like in one array. And then, so basically, this is useful for if you want to loop through all the titles in a song. Um, you know, your program runs much faster when everything is in just one array. So, yeah, so basically, how that works is we're gonna do like the uh, 
we need an allocator. So we're gonna do scd dot key dot arena allocator dot init. So we get ourselves an allocator and this is going to be keep dot page allocator. And so we have ourselves an allocator and let me call defer about the units. Okay, cool. So this is going to help us, you know, clean up after ourselves. And what we, what we would like to do now is create an instance of the array list. And to do that, we're going to do var list equals multi array list. Now this is generic, so you have to pass it a type. And we're going to pass our song as a type. Also, we have to initialize our array list. So this is how you're going to do it. And once the array list is initialized, now we can start adding songs into the array list. And to do that, this should be quite simple. What we just do is uh, we try to append. We try to append uh, using this allocator. I think I should just make an allocator instance here. So, so basically we, we have like our allocator instance. Yeah, allocator and then the element we want to add is going to be a new song. So basically we're, we're adding a new song and the title of the song is going to be Hello, uh, Not Afraid. Uh, the track number is going to be like, let's see, or something. Uh, track number. I'll fully in best practices where she use like the snake case thing. There we go. And now we're trying to append this. So now we're gonna append more songs. So let me let me copy that. Do then this tip to what? Now we have not a very but a little bit of MM songs so I have uh uh tools what are assigned for she and what's the name of that sign eight mile we also have ah. can't seem to remember any eminent songs because I'm currently recording ha ah. <laughs> this is fun uh let's see you let's see. Okay, you know what? I'm done. Uh, so we're done with this, and we're just gonna stick with this three because can't seem to remember, you know, any other songs right now. It's pretty early, and so once we've appended this, now we want to. So what I want to be able to do is get a list of all the titles, um, so that I can print them out. And the way you will typically do this with the old for loop syntax is. You will have your for loop right here, and then you basically be like list of items, and then you're gonna get so with the way multi array lists work, you basically get the items for whichever field of your structure you wanna, um, you know, wanna reference. So for example, I wanna reference the title, and so I'm gonna get it like this, and then boom, std the load. So basically what I have now is I have each title of this song struct. So it's going to get the first title, the second title, the third title, and you know, one and all and all like that. And so what I can do in log this title, title, just like that. And if I say, and then I think everything's good. So let's do it in good run to make sure. And we're forgetting to put a string specifier here. Once I able to save, we run again. And what do we have? Boom. So we now have the three titles been printed out of the screen. You can see not afraid, not a gate mouth. Now here comes the problem. Okay, I think I need to fix something. 
um, make these have like different track numbers. Cool. Now, what if, now this is fine, this is cool, but what if I wanted to like get, you know, all of the track number items, for example, how do I do that? Um, of course, uh, an easy way would be, I would have to loop through, uh, the items again, and then track number, you know, stuff like that. But I don't know, that's, that's like another, you know, really messed thing to be done. So in comes the multi array list thing where you can have basically as many, um, as many slices as you want to add in. Now, the catch, of course, is that all of the items you uh, add here is going must be the same size, I believe. So, basically, what I'm trying to say is I can have these two items get that number. And this is going to work. All I just have to do is add track number here now. And as you can see, we now have, so we're getting this array. Uh, this slice and then we're also getting the slice and now we're iterating over both at the same time now this is very useful because now we can track each um, element for each array now of course like I said the catch is that these slices must have the same length uh, so for example the title and the track number so here we're gonna add now I don't think this needs like a specifier and then stack number. And with this, you can see that if you're running, we should be able to get title and track number for five, six, just as we have here. And we get that as you expect. So this is a very useful feature that you can use in a variety of uh, applications. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for the update at for loop in Zig. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any comments, just drop it in the comment box below. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.